Okay, it's here. Blender render video. A video my Instagram followers requested so much. It's my third attempt in recording it. I'll try to keep it as short and as simple as possible. And first of all, if you're not familiar with Blender, it's gonna be hard. But if you're, for example, content creator who worked with Blender before, you're good. Another thing is, it's important one, it's an ethical question. We're taking something that was meant to be used in a game and we're using it in a different way. So do not abuse this knowledge, this method, this power. Be respectful to content creators and don't be an asshole. I want to give a shout out to Unset Animation who inspired and encouraged me to learn this. I'm gonna link the YouTube channel and Instagram everything in the description. Okay, we're starting with basic Sims 4 rig. You can get it from Sims 4 Studio Animation tab. This is Blender 279. I'm gonna switch to 283 a bit later. This is Blender Render Engine. It doesn't exist in newer versions. Later we're gonna work in Cycles mode, but I decided to start from here because this sim, this scene is familiar to all of us and it'll be fun to see transform into something new. Okay, this is what I do. As you can see under the rig, there seems body parts that are disabled and we need to enable everything, delete teeth, then select everything and merge everything by clicking Ctrl J. So the body is one piece. And the next thing I do is add subdivision surface modifiers. Just go to modifiers, add modifiers, subdivision surface. I usually play with it a bit, but if your computer is not very good, just add modifiers and click apply. The next thing to do is to separate the eyeballs from the body. Click tap to go to the edit mode, pick one vertex on the eye, then click Ctrl L to select the whole eyeball, then click P and choose selection. Do that with both eyes and name them so you don't confuse them with each other or other things. Now, okay, when I started, I used Ninja Ripper method that, that basically rips sims that I made from a game into Blender. And for the longest time, it was something I used, despite it being really hard and time consuming. And 70% of the time, extruded sim in Blender looked nothing like the one in a game. It would always let me into Blender sculpting tools because I needed to fix the messy result. And then I realized that Blender sculpting tools were far, far more advanced than anything Sims cast can offer you ever. Even though at the time I knew some people were making their sims in Blender, I thought it was the lamest thing ever. Now I think there's no possible better way. This is how you do it. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna sculpt our sims face. Just go to sculpting mode and try all the sculpting tools. It's not hard. It's fun. It's not as limited as Cass. So you can make interesting faces. I made Kylie. It wasn't hard. It was hard in sims, but it wasn't hard in Blender. It was rather fun. Okay. While I'm sculpting, I can reveal something. I have no idea what I'm doing. Everything I know I figured out with Google and YouTube. I don't know if my ways are correct ways or maybe there's better, easier ways to do stuff. If you know them, please share. It's something I'm actually hoping for. So sims are low poly and that's why we use subdivision surface modifier to give a more detailed look and give ourselves more room to play when it comes to sculpting. The more polygons, the more details you can add. I don't know, I don't know much yet. I downloaded a 3D model body and it's detailed, but there's not that many polygons. I don't know how that works. Well, maybe we'll figure this out together. Oh, and at this point you might be asking, why even bother with Sims? Why not create a character from nothing in ZBrush or Blender? And yeah, I went there, but then I realized that I'm a Simmer. I'm a content creator since I was 11. And I don't want to separate myself from that. I have issues with Sims. Compared to modern games, Sims is not very pretty. I get that it's resource intensive enough already and it's slow and laggy for a lot of people, but that's what kills the game for me, the terrible lightning. And how limited the creator sim is. Seems to be slightly better, we're not gonna talk about it. But anyways, that's why we're here. This is Ninja Ripper. We're gonna use it to get textures from a game. Start it, fill in the game directory, and in the intruder inject window, find D3 D9 wrapper, then click run. Okay, the sim started. My sim is in Russian because I am Russian. Everybody always going crazy because of my sims and photoshop are not everybody, just, just Russians. But don't get alarmed, it's simple, I'm Russian. Я русская, ребятки. Alright, we're here to get a texture, as I said. Uh, we just need to throw skin tone, overlay, makeup, eyebrows and eyes on our sim. It's my channel folder, I use it for my videos, so there's not much in here. We're gonna go for Max's match look, so I'm just gonna quickly pick something up for our girl. Remember, the sim has to be bald, with no hair, no shoes and no clothes. I have a nude body, but I'm not gonna use it, obviously. Our girl is gonna be with some clothing covering her. Once we're done, we're just clicking F9, the game gonna froze for a second, and that's pretty much it. We got our texture. 
Open the Noises program. In it, find your Ninja Vapor folder and your folder with extruded files. I have tons. You just have one. Open it, open the texture folder, and then sort it by the size, the largest being on the top. Then you just click on every file looking for your textures. Um, it should be on the top of the list. It really depends on the textures you're extruding, but in my case, there will be three files that I'm gonna export as PNG files. Those files are the skin color, the overlay, and the details such as makeup, brows, and pieces of clothing. Now watch me export files. This is overlay. I selected the saving directory. I named it one, and I picked PNG format. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the other two files I need. This is skin color. Clicking export. Destination file. Format. PNG. Okay. Same thing with the last one. Export. Destination file. Format. PNG. Okay. It's time for the Photoshop. I opened my files in Photoshop where we need to put overlay on the skin color or the other way around. Play with blending modes. Edit colors the way you like it. Then just put the details image on the top. Then merge everything together and export as PNG file. If you can do this in different editing program, please do you. It's also possible to do this straight in Blender. I just don't know how. To me, it sounds like too much work. I opened my sim file in Blender 283. This is Cyclos. The old texture is not visible anymore. We need to put what we've just created in Photoshop on her. Go to the material properties. There is an old material you need to delete by clicking minus button. Then click new to create a new one. There is a small circle next to a base color. Click on it and then pick image texture. Then click open and I'm gonna find the texture I just made. Voila! Doing the same thing for both eyeballs. Pick an eyeball, material properties, delete all material, add new one, image texture, open, find your file. I'm going to add 3D teeth to my sim since I've deleted teeth in the beginning. It's not necessary, I just like it this way. I'm clicking on file, append, here's my teeth mesh. I'm going to object, Sims for Studio Mesh 1, append. Now we click on modifier properties. So we need to tie the teeth to our rig and to do that we need to select our rig in this object window in armature modifier. Now the teeth are not going anywhere. It's tied to the rig. I'm doing a little more sculpting. I'm doing that from time to time all the way till the end. Constantly fixing and adjusting something. Okay, camera. The camera is disabled. You can see it's gray in outliner window in the right upper corner. We need to enable it. Fun! I know! To get to the camera view, you need to hit zero on the numpad. And to set camera view, you need to position around the scene the way you like it and then hit control alt and numpad zero. And then just make little adjustments. I'm actually physically moving camera around the sim. Position it the way you need it. I would actually advise you to watch some tutorial videos on camera in Blender. Not only that, on everything I've mentioned because there's cool and simple elaborated videos on Blender camera movement. I can't explain everything. That's why I said if you have some Blender experience, it'll be easier. And I still do that. I watch tutorials and stuff I know just to learn something new. I'm creating lightbox. I don't know why. Shift A to create a cube. And then I go to the material properties, click new. And then for the surface, I choose a mission. I just like how it illuminates the sim. I don't think it's good for artsy pics, but I like how it looks. Okay, are you ready for rendered view? Ta-da! Well, it's not much, but okay, whatever. This is where I finally got idea for a picture, for a sim art, and I started fixing and re-sculpting the face a little bit here and there. Now pay attention, this is important. I'm going to file, append, lashes, object seems for studio mesh, append. Now just like with teeth, go to modifiers, select rigged in object window. So now it's tied to the eyes. I'm going to these tabs on the top, find the one with the plus, and then go to general and click on shading. You see an old editor, heaven and hell. It's hard, but cool. But what we're gonna do now is simple. Select eyelashes, go to the material properties, same thing we did with the body and eyeballs. New material, image texture, open, open eyelash texture. <laughs> You're probably so confused right now. Don't worry, this tutorial is going backwards, I feel like. Now to the actual node field. Repeat after me. Shift A. <laughs> Shift A. Shader. Mix shader. Place the node just like I did. The next is Shift A. Shader. Transparency. 
connect them exactly like I did. This was method for making alpha textures visible. Okay, let's see. Hitting render. Yay, cute eyelashes. I'm again in the sculpting mode, fixing a few things before posing my sim. So the sims is in Max's match style, which is whatever. But if you're using realistic textures, you really need to tone down facial expressions. Realistically looking sims look bad with the game animations in the game, but in Blender, it's even worse. Another thing I've learned while watching people sculpting characters is that even if you're creative facial expression, you still need a sculpting tools. For example, if your character is smiling, there gotta be some wrinkles, dimples, like this round apple cheeks above the smile, you know what I mean, stuff like that. Otherwise, it just looks scary, uncanny. It's, it's hard to do, I know it, I'm sometimes scared of what I've done, just keep that in mind. I've deleted lower eyelashes by going to edit mode, selecting and deleting them. And I added bubble gum by adding sphere, giving it more poly and using sculpting tools to get it look like a bubble gum. Now let's start with something we should have started with when I added teeth to our rig. Let's get good stuff to our scene. Open Sims 4 Studio. Now click on my projects. It's not mine. It's not yours. Unless it is. It belonged to a content creator who made it. I'm going to the folder I saved a couple of packages for this art. I need hair. Here's the package, it's Majestic Hair by Nightcrawler. I'm going to Meshes, and I'm gonna export the mesh. Give it a name. The texture for this one is really realistic looking, that's not what I'm going for. The same way I opened this package, I'm opening the texture of Majestic Hair by Couples Create, and here I'm exporting texture. Now back to Blender. Click Append, find the hair, Object, and we need to select all those Sims for Studio Mesh files and click append. We need to select them and merge them together. And then tie to the sims head by going to modifiers and selecting rig. Give it a texture by going to material properties, delete existing material, add new, add image texture, open hair texture. It's alpha so we need to use node editor again. We're doing the same thing we did with the eyelashes, uh, adding the same two nodes, first mix shader then transparency shader and connect them just like I did. Now check the render, looking great. I'm fixing the hair in sculpting mode a little bit and again, fixing pose, fixing camera, taking a break. I kinda lose understanding of what looks good if I concentrate on the scene too much, so breaks are great. Going back to Sims 4 Studio, opening baseball cap package, same thing, export the mesh, export the texture. I got a huge piece of video here where I just go through cop colors and changing scenes background it was kind of sad it seemed like i was lost there okay blender file append all the same thing tie it to the sim give it a texture now again i'm going around the head with sculpting tool hiding the hair under the cup and when i'm done i'm adding texture to the cup the cup is by cat's blob I gave transparency note to bubblegum, colored it, played with other effects to see what will look good. It looks like a light bulb, but it's not a shiny render. I didn't like the eyelashes, there was no volume, it's like they're barely there. I even added another row of eyelashes, but it didn't do much. So I gave up, decided I'm gonna add, add them in Photoshop later. Uh, I added an iPhone, this one's by Murphy. I added it to the scene, gave it a texture, tied it to the rig. As you probably can tell, I'm just trying to find a better way to position everything, saying it looks better. The final result is not gonna look like that much, but I want you to watch me suffer. The skin started to annoy me, so I decided to fix the color in Photoshop. It looked really red, so I used a couple of Photoshop tools to reduce it. It's actually cool that you can just save the fixed texture, it's gonna update in Blender by itself. There is no need to mess with textures again. Oh my god, an ear! Sims do not have ears. The one I have has this blobs with texture, so I found this free 3D ear on the side called Turbo Squid. Uh, and I just put him on a sim. I don't know if there is a way to connect it to the rig, so just kind of floating in there. I'm adding it at the end. And for the texture, you just add a new texture and click on the base color and pick the eyedropper tool and click somewhere on the face to pick a color for the ear. As the final steps, I'm adding little things. Right now, I'm adding nails. These are by Redhead Sims. Doing the same thing, connecting to the rig. I have no texture. I'm just gonna give a color and play with settings to make them shiny. 
Um, it's not that hard if you think about it, right? Um, it was definitely hard for me. I'm a crybaby. I cried a lot. But there was no going back for me, you know? I really wanted to learn this. I feel like some people might achieve more in this than I did, like in a short time. Well, let's all hope they'll share some tips. I added earrings by Serenity. These are Diana earrings. Um, again, I didn't add a texture. I just added color and, and gave it metallic properties. Made it a little shinier and just placed it on the scene without connecting it to a rig. Well then, the final adjustments, working with light and color. The rim light is my favorite. It gives the depth to a picture. I like it a lot. I added nearly everywhere. About light, again, I advise you to watch some tutorials on it. It's always interesting. The Blender Guru recently posted a video on studio lighting in Blender and I watched the whole thing even though I kind of already have my ways. It's always good to learn something new. Same thing with render, I just copied render settings from a tutorial, so it's high resolution, I had a denoiser add-on, I don't know if you need it in new blender. Sampling indicators are also, I guess, high, like 200 for render and 100 for viewport. I hit F9 and it renders for an hour. Then it's time for Photoshop, it's absolutely unnecessary, I just like editing. That's why I didn't close the hole on the neck, on the sims neck, because uh, I thought it would be easier just to remove it in Photoshop. I'm editing it for a thumbnail, so it's gonna be bright, shiny, juicy, you know how it goes. You know, as I was making it, I thought I'm gonna watch it in a year and cringe so hard. Now I'm hoping that I will cringe, because that will mean that I will know so much more than I do now. I really hope that uh, this will gain some kind of popularity among simmers. Maybe it will be a thing. Maybe we will share our sculpted rigs and stuff like that. I think it's cool. Imagine how great your Sims story could be with Sims pictures from Blender. Well, I hope now you know how I made my Sim art pictures. This video is impossibly long. I cannot believe we're almost done. I don't know. I hope this video was helpful. You know, if there will be even one person who will find their passion for Blender or 3D modeling, in general or even simart that would mean it was worth it i don't know who you are watching this but it was for you okay i'm going to bed see you soon i love you <laughs>